There's something addictive about the idea of building power yourself. Not just buying a fast car, the late nights in the garage, the smell of high-octane fuel, the satisfaction when the dyno sheet finally shows numbers you can brag about. But if you start with the wrong engine, you'll spend more time chasing problems than horsepower. That's why we're counting down the five best platforms to build serious power. The ones that take abuse, respond to mods, and still make sense for your wallet. These aren't unicorn swaps or one-off race motors. These are proven legends you can actually find, build, and daily if you do it right. We'll look at why each platform works, what the most popular upgrades are, what they cost, and how much power you can realistically expect without detonating your bank account or your pistons. Let's get started. Number five, Honda K-Series, the K20 and K24. Honda engines have always punched above their weight, but the K-Series changed everything. When it launched in the early 2000s, the K20 brought IV tech with continuous intake cam phasing and high lift V tech on both cams in the performance trims, a rigid aluminum block, and a head that flowed like it belonged on a race car. It was light, efficient, and loved to rev, all the way past 8,000 RPM. Then Honda added displacement with the K24, and the community never looked back. What makes it special is flexibility. You can snag a junkyard K24 for well under 1500 bucks, or spend a little more for a performance trim K20Z from a Civic SI. The aftermarket is massive. Mounts, harnesses, swap kits, intakes, fuel rails, you name it. It's the Lego set of engines. The cheapest way to wake it up is a good header, high flow intake, and a tune on Honda K Pro. You'll see around 220 to 230 wheel horsepower on a K20 and roughly 250 plus on a K24, but the magic really happens when you add boost. A quality turbo kit, think Precision 5858 or Garrett GTX 3076, runs about three to four grand. Throw in forged rods and pistons, ARP head studs, and you've got a reliable 400 to 500 wheel horsepower daily on pump gas. Add flex fuel and a conservative tune, and it'll live there happily. For the hardcore crowd, builders have pushed 700 plus on sleeved, fully built K blocks. It's not cheap. By the time you add machine work and fueling, you're 10 grand deep. But that's still supercar power from a front wheel drive Econobox motor. The K series fits in everything EG Civics, Integra, DC2s, Miatas, Lotus Elises, even old BMW E30s. There's something satisfying about hearing a K-Swap scream down the straight. That metallic VTEC crossover sound as it hits eight grand never gets old. Downsides? Torque. Even the K24 feels soft below four grand unless it's boosted, and front wheel traction becomes a science project past 350. But for cost per smile, the K-Series is unbeatable. It's light, it's tough, and it loves abuse. If you're new to building engines, this is your playground. Number four, Ford Coyote 5 liter. When Ford dropped the Coyote in the 2011 Mustang GT, it instantly became the LS's natural rival. Aluminum block, dual overhead cams, variable valve timing, and a willingness to rev to 7,500 RPM right out of the showroom. The modern 5.0 isn't just powerful, it's refined. Stock, a Gen 3 Coyote makes about 460 horsepower. The newer Gen 4 bumped that to around 480 depending on trim. The aftermarket support is massive. A simple tune, long tube headers, and a cold air intake will get you into the 500s at the crank. But the real fun starts when you add boost. Whipple, VMP, Roush, and Pro Charger all make kits that bolt on in a weekend. On E85 with a careful tune, Many see around 700 wheel horsepower on a stock bottom end. The sound of a Whipple whining its head off at Redline is mechanical music, a high-tech counterpoint to the LS's deep chop. The Coyote's modular design makes it great for swaps, too. Ford's control pack lets you drop it into Fox bodies, classic Broncos, even kit cars without a wiring nightmare. It's more expensive than an LS. A good used engine often runs six to eight grand but it gives you modern tech, screaming revs, and impressive reliability. 
downsides? Complexity. Four cams, variable timing, tight packaging. It's not the easiest to work on, and parts prices reflect that. But if you want a modern V8 that takes boost, revs like a sport bike, and makes over 700 horsepower without drama, the Coyote earns its spot. Number three, Toyota 2 JZGTE. The legend. The 2JZ isn't just an engine, it's a cultural event. Three liter, twin turbo, iron block inline six. The heart of the MK4 Supra and half the internet's car memes. It's famous because it does two impossible things at once. It makes outrageous power and refuses to die. Stock form, around 300 horsepower. Built form, a thousand if you've got the fuel and bravery. The short block is over-engineered to a ridiculous degree. Forged crank, thick rods, strong mains. Builders have seen 600 to 700 wheel horsepower on stock internals with good tuning. The go-to recipe is the single turbo conversion. Ditch the sequential twins, bolt on a Precision 6466, or Garrett GTX 3582R. Add a proper manifold, injectors, fuel pump, and ECU, suddenly you've doubled factory power. With E85 and supporting mods, you can cruise at 800 all day, if you're brave. It's not cheap though. A real 2JZ GTE costs eight to 10 grand bare, and building one properly adds another five. But the reward is power delivery that feels like an event, smooth spool, long pull, and an exhaust tone that'll raise hair on your arms. There's a weight and cost penalty, sure, but it's still the gold standard for boost and survive. The 2JZ is the yardstick every other engine still gets compared to, and that tells you all you need to know. Number two, Nissan RB26, D-E-T-T. The RB26 is the soul of the Skyline GTR, a 2.6 liter twin turbo inline six that sounds like nothing else on earth. Built for racing, it revs to 8,000 RPM with the urgency of a sport bike. Factory rated at 276 horsepower because of Japan's gentleman's agreement, real output was well north of 300. The design is pure motorsport thinking. Individual throttle bodies, solid bottom end, head flow that rivals modern engines. Stock internals handle roughly 500 wheel horsepower when tuned properly. Add forged rods and pistons, bigger turbos, and a solid tune, and seven to 800 is realistic. The Achilles heel is oiling. The stock pump drive can shear at high RPM, and the sump sloshes under lateral Gs. The fix is simple, crank collar mod, upgraded pump, baffled pan. Do that, and it's rock solid. Driving an RB-powered car is like time travel to 1990s Japan. The turbo whistle, the intake rasp, the way it screams as boost builds, it's pure theater. It's pricier than a 2JZ and parts are rarer, but every pull feels special. It's mechanical art from a time when engineers built things for racing first and marketing second. Number one, the LS family from GM. You knew this was coming. The LS isn't just an engine, it's an ecosystem. From the LS1 that debuted in the C5 Corvette to today's LS3, LS7, and even the LQ truck variants, GM accidentally created the most mod-friendly power plant on the planet. 5.3 to 6.2 liters of small block simplicity, push rods, two valves per cylinder, compact dimensions, and iron block strength when you want it. Stock output ranges from 300 horsepower to 430 plus, but that's just the start. Step one, the cam swap. A mid-range Texas Speed or BTR grind with springs and push rods. Nets you 60 to 80 extra horsepower and that famous choppy idle that turns heads before you even hit boost. You'll spend maybe 1500 bucks total and never stop grinning. Step two, forced induction. This is where LS builds divide the crowd, turbos or superchargers. Turbo setup. A single budget build runs three to five grand if you piece it together, or 10 grand for a full twin kit. Stock bottom ends have seen around 700 wheel horsepower with good fuel and tuning, but that's not guaranteed. Add rods and pistons and you're flirting with four digits. The payoff is a wild top end rush once boost hits. Supercharger setup. 
costlier up front, six to nine grand, but you get instant torque and consistency. Whipple Magnuson Pro Charger, pick your poison. The blower wine paired with that choppy cam idol is American car culture distilled into one sound. It's controllable, repeatable power that still scares you every time you floor it. The LS's secret weapon is size. It fits anywhere. Miatas, RX-7s, E36 BMWs, old pickup trucks. Name it, someone's already swapped it. Parts are everywhere, tuning support is endless, and you can literally rebuild one with hand tools in your garage. Weaknesses? Verify oiling health, use quality head fasteners, and make sure the machining's right when you push big boost. Do that, and it's a tank. You can beat on it, overheat it, under oil it, and it'll probably still fire the next day. That's why it's number one. For pure performance per dollar, nothing else even comes close. The rivalry, the reality, and the reason we build. Every builder has a favorite, and every garage argument eventually comes down to the same question. LS or JZ? American Torque or Japanese Precision? Cast Iron Boost Monster or Aluminum Small Block Chaos? Here's the truth. Both are brilliant in their own way. The LS wins the wallet war, the 2JZ wins the legend war. One's the hero of drift tracks and grassroots builds. The other's the poster child of import tuning. Neither is wrong. What really matters is the story you want to tell. The late night wrenching, the first startup after a build, the look on your friend's face when your budget setup outruns his new car. That's why we do it. So whether you're chasing eight grand red lines in a K-swap, chasing rally dreams with a Coyote, or fabricating turbos for your LS truck, keep building, keep learning, and keep that passion alive. Drop your favorite platform in the comments. Tell me what you're building and why. And if you want the follow-up on the worst engines people waste money on, hit subscribe. This is Forced Induction TV, where horsepower isn't handed to you. It's earned, one busted knuckle at a time.